quick audience participation. How many of you uh, out there have been to see your doctor this year? So raise your hands, please. Okay, great. How, how about a dentist? How about a psychiatrist? How many need to see a psychiatrist in this audience? So, how many of you have a good idea what your IQ is? How many of you have a good idea what your CQ is, what your compassionate quotient is? Has anybody out there been involved in measuring uh, your compassion? Well, <laughs> there you go, P personal testimony of compassion and not at work. Um, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. Uh, and in fact, it's so difficult that very few of us have measured compassion. Let me walk you through a little bit about what we're doing at Carrier Clinic in the effort of measuring compassion. So, so first of all, uh, compassion is at the, so do I have a clicker here? Oh, beautiful, thank you. It's, it's an intersection, an intersection between empathy and sympathy. So it's understanding patients' concerns in the hospital for us, and it's feeling our patients' emotions at the same time. So it is an opportunity for us to address uh, an innate connection uh, for our patients to have relationships. Our skills in it are attention uh, and listening and understanding context and perspective of our patients. And we have a wide variety of patients in the hospital. So what, what are our, pa our staff uh, try to do? They try to uh, adjust their responses to our patients' needs. Uh, they've got to have clinical expertise uh, so they can respond effectively to our patients. They've got to be aware of, of how our uh, patients are reacting to them uh, and uh, engage our patients in their decisions about their care. And they have to use self-awareness to manage their own personal emotions in this process. So the patients experience us as respect, appropriate expressions of, of caring, and then information and decision-making processes that we tailor. Now, we do this all in a very short period of time, it's a very complex process that we're developing, and we have le less and less time in hospitals. So what's an, what's an antidote to all of that? It is becoming more empathic offering more emotional support, offering more uh, opportunities for us to understand our patients, and then effective communication over our period of time that our patients are with us. So four characteristics in compassion. So uh, the other two are respect for uh, our patients uh, and families' participations in their care decisions, time-consuming process to go through, and then co contextual knowledge of the patient as an individual in a family constellation, a learning about that family constellation when you, we have been in an era of don't ask, don't tell, don't know for years. That's how we, the kind of information that we get in psychiatry at these, this point in time. How do you get by that? And how do you design a system of care that will allow you to get positive information on patients? So let me walk you through some of the things that we're doing here at Carry Us. You can see all the positive effect uh, that, uh, being compassionate with patients, and not only psychiatric issues, but health issues that impact psychiatry and people's state of minds. So we began to think about compassionate carrier in a different way. So uh, we have a strategy map. It's mission, vision, value. Every work good organization does, and in fact, I surveyed 100 hospitals randomly on whether in fact they included compassion in how they did their business. Was it in their vision? Was it in their mission? Was it in the values and the way they do their work? Every hospital except for one had compassion uh, in their uh, value systems. Uh, and I also surveyed them and asked them, so it's a major part of how you do your business. It's a value, it's where you're heading, it's how you treat people. Uh, do you measure it? And there wasn't a hospital around. I did the traditional Google of a compassionate care index. Do you measure compassion in any way? No hospital was. I went to the measurement systems. I went to Prescani, I went to Jackson, I went to a whole variety of companies that actually measure our customer experience, uh, which is required, by the way, by the federal government. And I said, do you guys measure compassion in any way, shape, or form? No. We have little components of it, but we don't measure it. Why? What's so 
difficult about measuring compassion. Why don't we do it? And by the way, we should do it. We should do it because we do what we measure. It's an unfortunate thing. And maybe the fact that we're not measuring it is one of the reasons that we haven't adopted integrative medicine in the way we do our work at hospitals. Uh, we don't measure it, we don't do it. We have so many things that we measure, so many things that we pay attention to uh, that, that uh, it gets neglected in the process. So we, we started looking at the elements of compassion. And those elements start with Let me see if I can get you over to the, whoop. there we go. So uh, in, back to informed decision making, continuity of care, trust, coordination of care, and attention to patients. So we decided we'd come up with a, a, our own carrier version of a compassionate care index. So we decided we would aggregate questions about trust, all of those elements together, and ask our patients. We went to our uh, measurement company, Prescani, aggregated all the measurements together and actually last month launched the gathering of information about our staff's uh, expression of compassion. Why do we want to do that? Obviously, it's what we do and how we do our business, but there's a bunch of other elements to that. One is we need to be able to hire patient, uh, staff who have a great deal of compassion in their soul. And uh, the Compassionate Care Index allows us to identify the characteristics that patients believe are attached to compassion. It also allows us uh, to hire individuals in an optimized way. So uh, we're now going to be using that information to help us identify characteristics and questions that we're going to be asking of prospective employers as we seek them to work at Carrier. And so our staff, we believe, will be selected on their compassionate capability, their compassionate quotient. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to be training. So we're looking at the characteristics that we can train, the items that we've identified that are compassionate. And then finally, the last two areas are, can we reward compassion in, the, in our staff in order to continue to have them express it? And secondly, can we have a, a situation where they learn compassion and keep compassion in their soul and don't burn out, don't suffer compassion fatigue. So we've added all those elements into the Compassionate Care Index and are starting to work on that. Uh, and we'll be using our entire staff to find ways to answer those questions. So in the meantime, we, just, we started thinking about the fact that we were reinventing our campus. Um, and we're in the process of a major building campaign um, and uh, we're looking to make Carrier a better place to both give and get care. And so could we begin to create a compassionate campus at Carrier? So we went to all the different elements that I mentioned before and converted them into what you would do with your campus. So one, one was being green. So we have a 17-acre solar farm. We live on 300 acres of land next to the only mountain range in New Jersey. Um, and we, we have a beautiful campus uh, right outside of Princeton, and it's an idyllic situation. It was a farm for many years, so it has all the elements, a lot of clear area, a lot of trees, all of, uh, beauty surrounding us. So we actually have what we believe are the elements of compassion in our environment. We looked at lighting. Now, lighting in most buildings, in most hospitals, is fluorescent. Um, and it, it is not good for you. There's a number of studies out that it's bad for your health. Actually, it flashes, uh, it creates headaches, it does a variety of different things. We replaced 3,000 light fixtures over the last year and a half with natural spectrum lighting. LED is natural spectrum lighting. By the way, it happens to be very good for the environment. Um, so it's a natural, uh, you both provide better lighting to reduce depression and to help people uh, get through very difficult times. At the same time, you're uh, more kind to the environment. Uh, we look to begin to uh, bring in, we have Cooler for Karma, who you're going to hear from very shortly, starting uh, to work at Carrier. We have a number of our staff who teach mindfulness, who, who teach a variety of different things uh, at Carrier. Right now they're in units, that's the way we're organized. Uh, by the end of the year we're going to have what's called a treatment mall. Um, and so you will be able to go to a treatment mall where there'll be all different kinds of things you'll be able to get yourself exposed to. Uh, in, a, in a way that will allow you to carry them with you when you leave our hospital. 
Uh, we uh, decided that we would begin, uh, actually over two years ago, to take a look at the art that was on our campus. Uh, and there is a considerable body of art about the healing properties of art, and whether in fact art can influence that process, and it can. And the art typically that does that is our scenes. They're scenes of nature where you can place yourself. Um, and so we've actually begun replacing every piece of art. We have a committee uh, that uh, judges art. We have artists that submit to us. Uh, and then we select the art and we place it throughout our hospital uh, in very conspicuous places where our patients can uh, interact with the art. We're working right now on an agreement with the Grounds for Sculpture. Those of you that know it from this area, wonderful sculpture. We're going to be a place where they rotate their sculptures. So we have art out on the grounds of the campus. Uh, using color and design throughout the campus, lots of natural light. Uh, almost every one of our buildings has two sides of, of um, uh, light coming in uh, from uh, various windows at the top of the building. So, um, our communing with nature, uh, if you've ever been to Carrier, we have uh, chickens, we have roosters, we have pheasants, we have guinea hens, we have birds all over our campus. Uh, and they interact with us. They're free and loose and uh, move all over the place. We're in the process of building a new barn uh, where we have animals. We have equine therapy. Uh, we are um, in a, a very aggressive effort to add additional kinds of animals, believing that animals and pet therapy is an important part of how people uh, uh, heal. Um, and we are just about to launch uh, the third item down, a compassionate, compatible servant leadership uh, style of, of uh, managing carrier clinics. So we're matching the leadership strategies that we have uh, with uh, how we do our work. And then one of the other elements of carrier, it's 105 years old. It's the oldest psychiatric, private psychiatric hospital in New Jersey, and it has a lot of history in it. And uh, the history, unfortunately, has been degraded over the years. So we've been taking down old, very old buildings that we can't rescue. Uh, but what we've done with each of those buildings is take a piece of that and weave it back into the, the fabric of carriers. So we have a project called Paths to the Future. Uh, and they are all about taking the bricks off of those buildings and using them to build paths around our campus. We have windows to the future. Uh, we've taken 100 and 18 double hung windows. We've farmed them out to artists to paint scenes of carrier on uh, so that they, they will actually be used to decorate our new facilities. Um, we uh, have taken down six trees in the process of building one of our buildings. We recycled all of those trees back into totems. They're being carved now by a Len Lenape Indian uh, to represent the animals that uh, are the names of our programs. Uh, so that we're, we're weaving back history constantly. So let me um, tell you what I think are some of the outcomes, and these are what we'll, we're measuring at Carrier uh, for our staff is, this, is their strength to be with suffering. Now, here is a, an interesting challenge at Carrier, especially given the fact that we only have about six to ten days to really have a profound impact on somebody. Um, so we have to re really work at it constantly. Our staff, as a result of those six days, doesn't get to witness the change. It's only a small part of it. We start change in an inpatient hospital, and then we hand it off to somebody in the community. Many of you in, in the audience are among those people. We uh, are looking uh, to get our staff to be more courageous about how they do their work. That means bringing in new ideas, new approaches, uh, to build their resilience, uh, to improve uh, our, all of our personal uh, and work relationships, uh, improving our health, happiness, and well-being among all the people that work at Carrier, and then increasing our own capacity for self-compassion and self-care. So uh, work is love made visible. I remember Cahill Gibran in college 40 years ago. Uh, it's still alive in my life. Um, and uh, we have created an environment at Carrier where we believe we're bringing elements together, including compassion, including many of the things that you heard taught about today in a harmonious relationship to produce an opportunity for everybody in our, that comes to Carrier. We treat over 6,000 patients a year to have a unique experience that uh, resonates with their souls. 
So uh, I think we're going to all be back. Each of the speakers, by the way, instead of taking questions here, if you have a question, I, we're going to be back in the, uh, Puneet will be in the library area, or just on the side. Okay, we'll be back on the side if anybody has any uh, questions about uh, any of the speakers, myself included. Uh, we'll stick around uh, on the outside area here to answer those questions. Thank you very much.